Hello. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello, Hello. teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello, teacher. Good evening. How are you feeling today? I'm well. Okay. Good. In my case, my day was very easy. Very easy. That's good. It was not hard. Relax. Nice. Uh -huh. That's really good. So we are in the third day of this session of this week. So now we are going to talk about another uh, topic. Really? Yes. That, that is very interesting. Yes. Um, yesterday we were talking about adjectives. We were uh, learning something about the adjectives how to form then the suffix. Uh, also, we were talking about um, the examples, opinions, what are the adjectives. Uh, also, we were talking about comparative and superlative adjectives. And now we are going to talk about nouns. We know that there are four main um, groups of words in English, and one of them is the adjectives, and the other one is the nouns. Also, we have the verbs in the adverbs. Now we are going to learn about the second group, that is the nouns. So let's begin with the topic that we are going to develop this day. So we have here the nouns. We are going to develop the topic. So we are going to start. But first, what are nouns? And it says that nouns are one of the four major word classes. along with verbs, adjectives that we were talking about yesterday, and adverbs. Nouns are the largest. We are using the uh, superlative adjectives in this case, largest word class. And we have different types of nouns. So we have types of nouns. And it says that a noun refers to a person, animal, or thing. And we have some examples. We had nouns referring to people. One. And we have some words like boy, woman, student, Maria is a proper noun, a girl. Teacher, President, Lennon, Man, Mother, John. So in the first part, we are talking about um, the type of nouns. And it says that in this case, we use the noun to refer to a person, animal, or thing. 
And the adjectives uh, are words that we usually use to describe people, uh, things, and animals. But in this case, we use the nouns to um, refer to that person, animal, or thing. So in the first one, we have the nouns referring to people. And we know that we have uh, two types, the proper nouns and the common nouns. The proper nouns are the name of uh, people, name of cities, name of countries, and the common nouns are the uh, words that we use to refer a group of people. En este caso tenemos, verdad, los uh, nombres que son los, las palabras con las que nos referimos a las personas, animales o cosas. Y ya decíamos, tenemos dos tipos, los nombres propios y los nombres comunes. Que los nombres propios ya sabemos que son los nombres de personas, de ciudades, de países, etcétera, etcétera. Eh, y también tenemos los nombres comunes, que son aquellos nombres que se les dan a las personas. In this case, boy, it is not uh, just one boy in the world. There are a lot of boys in the world. So, in that case, we are using that word to refer to um, a specific uh, person in a group of people, boy, girl, woman, men, and that all of the words. The second type, we have the number two, are nouns referring to animals. Nouns referring to animals and also things. And we have some words book, free, Manchester, name, the word name, computer, bird. Idea, place, picture, dog, and love. So we have um, the second type, the nouns referring to animals and things. Um, we are not using a specific name for that animal. For example, for our dogs, we have a special name or a specific name. We can uh, call them uh, Terry. Uh, we can call them uh, Chispita. We can call them um, Bruno and all the names that we use to name our dogs. And those names are like the, the, the proper names or the proper nouns. But in this case, we are using the word dog to refer to that species. Estamos refiriéndonos a la especie, ¿verdad? No al nombre que se le puede dar a la mascota o al animal, sino al nombre en general para ese grupo de cosas o de animales. And we have some examples here. Not just the, the, the words, some examples. Or we can apply these uh, nouns. The woman in the picture. Is my mother. We have three nouns in this phrase. We have the number one, that is woman. The second one, picture. And the third one, mother. The second example. Mm, her name is Anna. She is from Manchester. Again, we have three nouns here. The first one is name. The second one is Anna. And the third one is Manchester. So we can use a lot of nouns in our phrases 
when we are talking about something or we are expressing our ideas. So it says that most nouns are common nouns referring to classes or categories of people, animal and things. That was, I was saying before that we have the common nouns that they refer to classes or categories of people, animals, and things. So it says most, uh, most nouns are common nouns. We are going to mark this referring to classes or of people. animals and things. And we have um, three different common nouns. We have the number one that are the proper nouns. And uh, the proper nouns are, are the names of a specific people, animals, and things. In this case, we can say that the proper nouns are the name of people, the names of the pets or animals that we have in our house, and also the names of some uh, buildings, some streets, some uh, beaches, some uh, cities, and the countries. So in that category, we can use that names to have the proper nouns. They are written with a capital letter. They are written with a capital letter. At the start. Capital letter. It is very important that we write the proper nouns with capital letters to make the difference with the uh, common nouns. And what is the capital letter? The capital letter is um, the big letter for say something. In Spanish is la letra mayúscula. In this case, we use the capital letter to write the proper nouns. Utilizamos la letra mayúscula con los nombres propios, porque obviamente hacemos la diferencia, y marcamos que es un nombre propio de persona, de ciudad, de playa, de nuestra mascota, etc. For example, uh, Flor Margarita. Someone that uh, has this name, right? Flor Margarita, Jose, Patricia, San Salvador, Terry, mm. Playa El Espino, eh, París. Um, Bruno. All of the names are a uh, proper noun. So at the beginning, we have this one that is the capital letter. The big one. So it's very important that we can write it in the correct way. So let me mark these ones and we are going to continue with the another one. Okay. Then we have the second one that are the concrete nouns. Concrete nouns. 
And what are the concrete nouns? So it says that it refers to material objects, which we can see or touch. In this case, when we are using the concrete nouns, it refers to uh, something that we can touch and that we can see. For example, um, we can see a piece of paper. A bottle. A cup. A board. A notebook. A pencil. Keys. Mm, let's see, a mirror, a book, and shoes. Something that we can see or we can touch. What are the concrete nouns? Then we have the last one, that is the number three, that are abstract nouns, abstract nouns. It refers to things which are not material, such as ideas, feelings, and situations. Abstract nouns, it refers to things which are not material objects, such as idea, feelings, and situations. Something that we can uh, maybe feel but we can touch and we can see, for example, love, sadness. Um, also, we can say um, my ideas, my thoughts, uh, all of that and my imagination that are abstract nouns because we can see them and we can touch them, but we know that they are here with us. So we have four, uh, we have three types. The number one, the proper nouns, the concrete nouns, and the abstract nouns. So how can we identify the nouns? Identifying the nouns. Um, yesterday, we were talking about how we can identify the adjectives. And we uh, were saying, that to identify the uh, adjectives, we have to um, see the ending of the words. Uh, it said that there is no uh, a rule for making adjectives, but we uh, have to look for the suffix, the end of the uh, words to identify an adjective. And we were saying some uh, suffix to identify the adjectives, but now we are going to learn how to identify a noun. Ayer estábamos viendo cómo identificar los adjetivos. Dijimos que necesitábamos ver los sufijos o las partes finales del de adjetivo para poder identificarlos. Pero ahora vamos a tratar de identificar los nombres o ¿Cómo podemos hacer para identificarlo dentro de una oración? So, it is not always possible to identify a noun by its form. However, some words ending can show that the word is probably a noun. Again, we are going to 
look for the ending of the war. It is not always possible, but we can try to identify the noun. So we are going to see the endings. Then we have an example. So for the first ending, we have this one, H, and we have some words. We have postage. Language. Then we have and we have some examples, insurance. Importance, difference. Another one, teacher, driver. Actor. Who? Childhood. Motherhood. And fatherhood. So we have here the endings that we can um, use to identify that we have some nouns in our phrases or in a paragraph. We have the endings and we have the example of the words. So we have uh, something that you already use in your sentences that is the gerund. Some of you um, use uh, when we were uh, writing the exercise in Google Docs. Algunos de ustedes utilizaron el gerundio eh, cuando estábamos trabajando en los ejercicios de las indirect questions en el 
in el Google Docs. So we are going to explain something about the German. That is this form, ING. These ING forms of verbs. Eh, básicamente el gerundio es la forma ING que se le agrega al verbo. That we are uh, known as a German. Can also can also act as nouns. For example, the word smoking is using the ing form. But in this case, it's just a noun. So in some cases, the words with ing at the end are um, used as nouns. Uh, because we have the verbs that are used in the ing form, but in this case, some words are uh, used uh, use as nouns because of the of the um the meaning, right? So then we have um the other topic that are the expression of quantity, but before uh continue with the topic you have some question or something that you want to say about the nouns something that you want you want to say or we can um do the exercises of the nouns hay algo que quieran decir o podemos pasar a los ejercicios del tema de los nombres Okay. Okay. So uh, I have a question. Tell me. Um. Uh, okay. Let me see the the page, please. That the term is uh, I S M. Let me this see. Uh -huh, okay. I as I S M. Okay. I S M. The end. And you put na nationalist. Mm -hmm. Nationalista. Uh -huh. Or nationalism. Because you, because you oh. you finish with the, with the letter T. Yes, you're uh, right. Oh yes. No, you, I I, uh -huh. I make a mistake in this case. Uh huh. Yeah. You you finish with nationalist uh -huh. with the letter T, and uh -huh. I have I don't know is the nationalist or nationalism. This one is correct. That's good. Yes. It was my mistake. I okay. use the T uh, and not the M. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you to you that you are um, in the class. That's good. Sometimes. Sí, en... <laughs> <laughs> eh, sí, en ese caso sí es cierto. Ahí es con la M y no con la T. Good. Thank you. So. We are going to do some exercise about this topic. Um, we are going to identify the nouns in the sentence. So I'm going to write 10 sentences and you have uh, to find the nouns that are in the, um, in the sentence. So we are going to mark the sentence with the nouns that you will find. So. Let me write this sentence. Exercise. Number one. Number two. Number three. 
I don't know what happened, but uh, the, the, the window closed and I don't know why. So I'm so sorry. Let me share the screen again. Okay. We are in number three, the Taj Mahal. Number four. Number five. Number six. Excuse me, what's mean Nick Place? A un collar. Nichols. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's going to look now. Should I have a question? Yummy. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what is happening. I have um, my internet connection is working well. So I think it's a problem of maybe my computer or the platform. So I'm so sorry. Uh, someone was asking me something. So now you can ask me before uh, sharing the screen again. Alguien me estaba preguntando algo. Y ya no le escuché porque se detuvo eh, lo de la plataforma. Así que eh, I am listening right now. The question. What does that mean? Look now. Look now. In that case, if you can see, si puede ver ahí, eh, empieza con una letra mayúscula. So eh, we can say that it is the, na the, the name of a city. Es una ciudad en la India. Es el nombre. Ok. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you. You're welcome. Ok. I hope that this thing will well right now. Because I want to end the exercise with you. So, I hope. So let me see. Number eight. Many new plants have been. In the garden. Lock of sheets. 
Okay. And number 10. A crowd. Okay, I think is um a problem of the platform. So let me let me notify this to someone that I am having troubles with the platform. Okay, so let's see. I have the 10 sentences. So I will give you time to read the sentence and to find the, the nouns because it is not just one, it has two nouns. And when you have all the, the sentence, when you read all the sentences, um, I will ask you to tell me the nouns in the sentences. So read the sentence, find the nouns, and we are going to um, discuss the nouns that we find in the sentences. I think that is not the day today. Okay, so uh, let me uh, try something. I will, um, let me see. Stop the, 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 the camera. So maybe uh, we can have the session like this. Maybe, I think it is possible to do it because I don't know what is happening. So we have the 10 sentence. Number one, the train was stopped at the station. Number two, a pack of cards is kept on the table. Number three, the Taj Mahal is a beautiful building. Number four, this necklace is made of gold. Number five, the ferryman could not put out the fire. Number six, my family is going to look now. Number seven, the Kenge is a holy river. Number eight, many new plants have been planted in my garden or in the garden. Number nine, the shepherd took his flock of sheep to the grassland. And number 10, a crowd gathered around the injured men. So when you have the answers, you can tell me the number one, just number one, because we are going in order. So if you have the answer, you can say it right now. Number one. Mm -hmm. Train. Train, good. And the other one? Second cars. But in the in the first one, we have two nouns. You have okay. train. Yeah. Train and a station. Good. Train and a station. The second. Uh -huh. Cars. The second one. Parts. Uh, maybe table. Mm, yes. We have table, but we have another one. A Car. Uh, is it's like uh, keep. No, that's the term. Uh, no, no, it's it's cards and table. Good. In the number three. Three. Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. And beautiful. And um, building. Building. Good. Good. In the number four. What? What? The the third place. Fireman. Fire. 
Let's go. Number four. Uh -huh, number four. Spider-Man. Necklace. Five. No, Necklace. number four. La number four. Necklace. 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 And gold. And gold. 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 And the number five. Fire. 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 Good garden. Mm -hmm. Number nine. Sheffer. 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 Flock. 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 And grassland. Grassland. Flock. Grassland. We have Sheffer. We have Flock. the number two. Sheffer. Yes, the Sheffer. Number two is sheep. And number three is grassland. 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 Uh -huh. Crown. In the last one. Crown. 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 Let's separate the nouns. In the number one, we have train. And train is a common noun. And also, we have the station that also is a common noun. In the number two, we have pack that is collective because we have uh, a lot of cards. Uh, cards are common noun and table it's also a common noun in the number three Taj Mahal is a proper noun es un nombre propio de el edificio then we have building that is a common noun come on, in the number four necklace is a common noun goal is a material yeah. noun in this yeah. case we are talking about some material, but, but also it is a common noun. Then we have in the <clears> number <throat> five, fireman, that is a common noun. In fire, that is abstract, something abstract. We can uh, touch it. In this case, tell me. Uh, what is the meaning of uh, oh. Fire, fireman. Fireman, bombero. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. In this case, the fire is because we can touch it um, because uh, we can make or we have an injury if we touch it because of the, of the heat. But uh, then we have the number um, six. Family, it's a common noun. Look now, is a proper noun because it is the name of a city. Then we have Ganga, that is a proper noun because it's the name of the um, of the river. Let me change this because I don't know what's the problem. Okay, I am here again. Uh, so I am saying that in the number six, I am reading the number six. So I think um, we have some minutes. I hope that we can end this session well. Okay, number six, it says family is common noun. Look now is proper noun. Number seven, Ganga is a proper noun because it's the name of a place. In this case, it's a river. And we have the noun a river that is a common noun. In the number eight, we have plants that um, it's a common noun and garden that is also a common noun. 
In the number noun, shepherd is a common noun. Sheep also is a common noun. And grassland is also a common noun. And flock also, it, in this case, is a collective noun, but it's also a common noun. And the number 10, crown, that is a collective noun and man, common noun. So we uh, finish the, uh, the nouns or the topic of nouns. And now we are going to begin the new topic that is expression of quantity. Expression of quantity. The expression of quantity tell us how many or how much of something there is. So in this case, these expressions tell us how many, this one, and how much, how many and how much of something that there is all we have in that case. So we compare, we're going to compare, compare these sentences. So we have the number one that it says, we get a little, we get a little rain we get a little rain in the spring and the second one says many people many people live in london So in this uh, sentence, we have expression of quantity. Nos está diciendo cuánto tenemos de algo o cuánto hay de algo. In the first one, we get a little rain. Tuvimos un poco, muy poco de lluvia. So in this case, a little is the expression of quantity. En el caso de la primera oración, a little, esa frase, que, esa palabra que ya está marcada ahí, es la expresión de cantidad. Eso es lo que nos está dando la pauta a nosotros para que sepamos cuánta lluvia hubo en primavera. En the second one, many people live in London. Many. Muchas personas viven en Londres. Many is the expression of quantity of that sentence. So when we find this kind of sentence, we also can tell that we are using the expressions of quantity, but those are not the uh, only expression that we have. It says, we use a little, the, the phrase a little, with none countable. So let me um, do something like this. This expression, a little, maybe I can do it um, hmm, thinner, like this. So this expression right here, a little. It says that we can use it with none countable. We use a little with non countable nouns, like we have an example rain, snow and a pollution. 
we cannot use a liter with countable nouns. So it says that we use a liter with not countable nouns and we can use it with countable nouns. A little lo utilizamos solo con los nombres no contables. No lo podemos utilizar con los nombres contables. Solo con los nombres no contables. Then we have we use many with countable nouns. It's something uh, that we already know because we said that uh, a little we only use it with um, non-countable nouns. And in this case, I will change this one. And many, we use it with countable nouns. For example, people, cars, chairs, and so on. We cannot use many with uh, non-countable nouns. So we use a little with non-countable nouns and many with countable nouns. So we have a, a list uh, about um, countable and non-countable expression of quantity. In this case, we are going to uh, see in the list that it starts with the least amount and ends with the most. En la lista lo vamos a poner con el que tiene menos cantidad y lo vamos a terminar con el que tiene más cantidad. So we have a list about uh, quantity expressions que empieza con lo que tiene menos cantidad Y terminamos con el que tiene más cantidad. List of expressions of quantity. Number one, we have not any. And we have two examples, countable, we can say there are not any biscuits left. And with not countable, we have this example. There is not any. water in the sink. Then we have the number two, that it says no, just the word no. And we have the countable, that it says there are no animals, no animals, in the park. And the non countable. There is no money in my purse. Excuse me, teacher. What okay. means think? Think. Think. Uh-huh. Word think. When you say there is not many water in the thing, uh maybe I don't know. I, I think that I say it's my skin, uh something in my uh finger or something in my face or something like that. No, uh, the word sink means lavabo. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Number three, we have another a uh, quantity expression that is some. We already know these words. Some. 
some. And we have some examples with countable. And it says, some children, I think this is one of the most common expression that we use, some. Some children play here on the weekend. And the non-countable example, there is some smoke coming from that house. The number four, a lot of, another one that is very common, a lot of, and we have the example, countable. She has a lot of dogs. She has a lot of dogs. And with the non-countable, It says, there is a lot of traffic There is a lot of traffic today. It's almost time, so let me end this. Lots of. Lots of women work here. And an uncountable. She made us a lot of coffee. Must. Also, this one is very common to use it in sentences. Must. Countable. She keeps most of her books. Teacher, tell me. And I have a question. Me. Uh, the number four, a lot of, mm -hmm. and number five, lots of, is the same or is different? Yeah, we can say it like this: a lot of. Ella tiene muchos perros in the in the sentence. Mm -hmm. And in the other one, there is a lot of traffic today. Hay mucho tráfico. And lots mm -hmm. of es eh, una gran cantidad de personas. Por ejemplo, en el, en el ejemplo del countable, lots of women. Eh, es cuando nos, um, nos referimos a un grupo bastante, bastante grande. Mucho. Demasiado. Uh -huh, oh, bastante oh. grande. En the first case, we have, she has a lot of dogs. Maybe she has 10 dogs. Ella tiene por lo menos mm -hmm. unos 10 o 11 perros. Pero en la otra es, a lot of women were here. Un montón. Muchas mujeres. No sabemos cuántas puede ser. 50, 60 mujeres las que trabajan ahí. Entonces nos referimos a cosas más grandes. In lots of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And the last one, non countable. We spend the most time. on the project. 
So that, those are uh, some uh, quantity expressions that we use in English to refer to a quantity, to refer to uh, something or how many or how much of something that we have. So now it's time to um, end this session that it was uh, something really um, weird like, uh, right now because of my, I don't know, my computer, maybe. But um, have a good night, see you tomorrow. And remember that tomorrow is the last day of this week that we are going to uh, work. So uh, tomorrow also, I will send you this document with the topics that we develop this week. So la otra semana, I, I mean, mañana les voy a mandar el documento con los temas que vimos esta semana. Siempre se los voy a estar mandando los días jueves, que es cuando termina la semana. Um, so uh, see you tomorrow and have a good night. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.